Thank you, please. That's plenty. Well, I am up here today to introduce our first speaker, Tom Clark. And as many of you who know him well, you'll know, you'll discover that Tom has a lot of interests. He's got a fast car. He's crazy about. He's a semi-avid mountain biker, a fully avid snowboarder. Mm -hmm. And as, as we know from his speeches, he assiduously enjoys travel. But my favorite thing about Tom is the way he talks about his family. Anyone who's heard a personal story from Tom knows he's madly in love with his wife. And he's a proud papa to two of the most perfect Westies in the world. So today, in Tom's third speech, Get to the Point, Tom will entertain us with a tale of mischief encountered by one of his dogs, Moby. The speech is entitled, Moby's Misadventures. In his speech, Tom will speak for five to seven minutes, and he hopes to incorporate the advice he's received from the audience in prior speeches. Particularly, he hopes to convey his speech content clearly and end with a strong conclusion that recaps the main ideas. So please help me welcome Tom Clark. in college, I decided I needed to get a dog. I had been dating my would-be wife, Anne-Marie, for about six months, and her parents had a miniature schnauzer named Zoe that reminded me how much I loved having dogs. I'd grown up with dogs, and I missed having them in my life. So you know, I lived in an apartment at the time, and it took me a while to really find a, a good dog, a good fit. So after a few months, I, I was lucky enough to find Moby. Now, the story I'm going to tell you today is a story about Moby and some of the misadventures he has encountered over the years that we've had him. And it'll focus specifically on one story. But before I can get to that story, you have to get to know Moby a little bit. Moby is a West Highland White Terrier, or Westie as they're often referred to. He's not a very big dog. He's 16 pounds. He's about a foot high, maybe two feet long. He's white, obviously. A little stand-up ear. Real, really cute dog. He's not one of these foo-foo dogs, though. He's, he's built real sturdy. He's a solid dog. Westies were bred for to be ratters, so they you know, are designed to go dig into holes and chase these little rodents around. They're curious, independent, intelligent dogs. And Moby encompasses all of this. this is, it describes him to a T. I mean, for example, just last weekend, he's, he's outside in the front yard, and Ray and I are outside working, and, and Moby decides, hey, there's this, there's this tunnel, this culvert that runs underneath uh, the road in our neighborhood some water in there. Man, I wonder, I wonder where this goes. <laughs> you know, I smell some interesting stuff in here. So he climbs into this culvert and he's cruising through there and, you know, he, he's not too worried about the fact that Anne Marie's back there going, Bobby, get back in this yard right now! <laughs> because he's, you know, he's off. He's doing his thing. You know, I'm going through this tunnel. Gets to the other side and he's cruising through the ditch until finally Anne Marie catches up to him and picks him up and physically brings him back to the yard, you know. It's a good, that's a good example of Moby's independence and uh, intelligence. Moby also loves to climb, and he's kind of, we call him an idiot savant in this sort of thing, because, for example, Moby jumps up on the toilet seat on occasion, which is kind of a peculiar thing, I know, but one day, he, he jumps up there, and the, the lid and the seat are down. <laughs> but somehow, he manages to land on the rim of the toilet. And he kind of looks around like, man, this isn't how this normally is. And he hops off like nothing happened. But this is the same dog that will come bounding into the living room and leap for the couch. And you're sitting there on the couch as he jumps, I don't know, maybe three, four feet away, and you're thinking, dude, 
Well, then no, that's the, you're not going to make it. And he smashes into the side of the couch and <laughs> kind of stumbles away. And I go, what happened? You know. So the particular story that I really want to share with you, which I'm getting to at this point, involves uh, my parents' sailboat. When I was in college, my parents had a sailboat. They kept it up north in Traverse City area. And it was kept in a, in a harbor and kept out on a buoy um, out in the middle of the harbor. So to get to the boat, we had a, a littler boat. And uh, we would get in the little boat and we would put her out to the big boat and tie it up the little boat. When lots of people were coming, my parents would bring the boat into the dock. And this was one such weekend. My parents had brought the big 30-foot sailboat into the dock with the little dinghy tied up behind it. Anne-Marie and I were had gotten back from the store, and so we're unloading stuff. She's up on shore and handing me stuff on, on the boat. Moby, of course, he's cruising around. He loved the boat. He's jumping up on the cockpit onto the deck and walking out onto the tip of the boat and, you know, gets out there has to back himself up because it's too narrow, turns around and goes to the back. Well, while he's exploring, he discovers that there's this little boat attached to the big boat. He sniffs it a little bit. He's like, this is, this is interesting. You know? real, real gently reaches out with his two front paws and puts him onto that little boat. What Moby had failed to realize was that the little boat wasn't actually tied that close to the big boat. There was about four feet of <laughs> line. And, and so he puts his little paws out there, and the boat just starts floating away so slowly. <laughs> and Moby kind of thinks, oh, this isn't good. So he, he does this you know, maneuver to kind of push himself back out of the boat. Of course. <laughs> The little boat just starts moving further away, yeah. faster. And I look over, and, and I see this little two-foot dog <laughs> stretched out between the big boat and the little boat. And he's looking around like, what the heck did I get myself into? Sure enough, and, and I remember this so vividly, sure enough, the boat floats away. And Moby just seems to hang there for a split second. And then he looks down, you know, just like in the cartoon. Splash! <laughs> Into the water. He comes up out of the water. He doesn't know what's going on, where he is. He starts swimming out to sea. <laughs> call him and call him. And, and, of course, he finally turns around. And now, well, we loved the boat. And, and we always, uh, whenever he was free to roam around, he always wore his life vest. So. The life vest has this nice handy dandy handle, so he cruises around and scoop him up and <laughs> set him on the table. I think, man, Moby, he's soaked, wet, but he still loves water. He still loves boats. I think he must figure, you know, curiosity killed the cat, but I'm a dog. <laughs> <laughs>